Hello. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at solving some ordinary differential equations in MATLAB, specifically a class known as initial value problems. So the equation that we're interested in relates the change of some dependent variable y uh, with respect to the independent variable t to some function of the dependent and independent variables. Now, a simple example of this is some population dynamics, which will be y prime of t. So this dy dt is going to be defined by some constant, which is our population growth rate, uh, times our current population. And in order to make this a little more realistic, we're going to add in a population limit, which is done through 1 minus y over y max, where y max is just that population bound that we're trying to set. So this is the function that we're interested in simulating. Well, the first step is actually writing this as a MATLAB function. So if we create a new file, we can make it a function by adding the function keyword. And then we need, first off, our output variables, which we're going to name dy, simply meaning the, the y prime term here. And we're going to name this function f. And it needs to be a function of both the independent and dependent variables. Uh, this is just a requirement by MATLAB so that MATLAB knows what's going on. So first always comes the independent variable t, followed by the dependent variable y. And we're going to set dy, our y prime term, equal to this equation right here. Uh, but we can't just put in k and y max. We need to actually supply it with some numbers. So we're going to call this 0 0.1. We're going to say that that's our population growth rate. Uh, multiply that by our population. And then add in this logistic term, which is going to be 1 minus y over, we'll set our maximum population to 1,000. And then we want to suppress this because we don't want to see uh, dy every time that the function evaluates. And then we end our function, and this becomes our nice little function f. So you'll save this as f.m so that MATLAB can find it. And then once we have this, we want to actually plug it into the ODE solver. So the way that we call the ODE solver is just ODE45. There are actually a, a number of different types of these, but we'll use ODE45. Uh, it's the most common and uh, one of the fastest. The first argument is the function name, and we just said that that was f. So this just tells MATLAB which function it actually needs to use. The next is the range of time over which we want MATLAB to integrate. So we're just going to start at 0, makes sense, and then we'll go to 200. So for instance, this might be just from the starting point to 200 years later. And we're going to set our initial population to 1. Now, if you execute this command right here, MATLAB will automatically plot the result for you, the, the time versus population plot. And it should be a nice logistic plot where it uh, starts off exponential and then kind of reaches some upper bound. Now, if you don't want to plot it right away, but you do want to store that information, you can store it in t comma y, like so. So this t is just the dependent variable from 0 to 200, or sorry, independent variable from 0 to 200. And y is the dependent variable for each of those times. And then... Once again, you probably want to suppress this, but then once you have this, you can go ahead and plot it or do whatever else you need to do with that. All right, so this is a very simple idea of what's going on. Uh, let's make it a little more complicated by looking at ballistics. So in ballistics, we're just saying that the acceleration of our ball or whatever, is going to be equal to uh, just negative g, the, the, the change in gravity, 
the acceleration due to gravity in the negative direction. Now, this is a little different from our function over here because now we have a second order differential equation. So the way we deal with this is we actually write y, this input, as a vector. This doesn't seem to be helping right away, but we'll get there. So our input variable will now have two values, y1 and y2, which means that our output function also needs to have two values. So we can call this dy, and we'll say that this is y1 prime and y2 prime. So what we're going to do is we're going to set y1 equal to y. And this will be our position, or our height in the air in this case. And we're going to set y2 equal to y prime, or our velocity. So looking at this, if dy of 1 is going to be y1 prime, well, y1 prime is simply equal to y prime, or our velocity again. Likewise, y2 prime is going to be y double prime, or our acceleration. OK, so now we have all of this sorted out, and we have a way to actually get from this first order in two variables to a second order in just one variable. So now let's write what the function is actually going to look like. So it's going to start off the same way where we have some function, and we're still going to have dy as our output variable, but this dy now is going to be a column vector. Likewise, we need a name, so f2 is going to be the name just to distinguish it from f, and this is going to be a function of our independent variable t and our dependent variable y, but once again, y is going to be a column vector. So in order to make sure that MATLAB actually spits out a column vector as the output, we need to initialize our dy as a column. So we'll do that using the zeros command. Then once we have that, we can actually start specifying what each of these needs to be. So we have two values, so we need to specify dy of 1 and dy of 2. So dy of 1 is going to be the velocity, it's this y prime. And we need to specify this in terms of our input variables, so the y1 and y2. Well, we see the velocity up here again, so dy of 1 is simply going to be equal to y of 2. dy of 2 is our acceleration, but this acceleration actually comes straight from the problem statement. So we can just plug in a negative 9 Point eight, and we've found our acceleration. Then we need to end our function, and we will have our function f2 completed. <clears throat> so now the question is, how do we actually plug this into our ODE45 so that we can do something useful with it? Well, we use the same syntax as before t comma y is going to be equal to ODE45. We'll put in the name of our function once again. So this is f2 now. We need to give it some time to integrate over. And we'll integrate from 0 to 20. And then the last thing is we need to give it the initial y value. Well, y actually has two components. It has the initial position and the initial velocity. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to put in a column vector. So we're going to set our initial position to 0, and we'll set our initial velocity to 100. Now once you have this, it's going to spit out a 2 by some, or some number by 2, basically a 2 column uh, matrix here, or array here. So in order to plot it, you need to just 
grab one of those and plot it against t. So if we plot t against position, that will end up being all of the first column of y. And this should give you a nice parabola. OK, so that is a little bit of population dynamics and a little bit of ballistics. So let's do something a little more interesting. And what we'll do now is a linear oscillator. And the idea behind a linear oscillator is that we want the mass times the acceleration to be equal to the force of the spring, which moves it back and forth. And to make it a little more general, we can also add in some damping, which is some force that's related to the velocity of our mass. So writing this in very simple terms, we can say that our y double prime and our y prime are going to be equal to, well, here's our easy one. It's just going to be y prime still. But this top one is going to be negative c over m times y prime minus k over m times y. Of course, MATLAB doesn't understand this, and so we need to actually do something that can plug into these values over here. So how do we want to do that? Well, we'll say that dy of 1, this actually doesn't change, right? dy of 1 is the velocity, and our velocity is also equal to y of 2, so we can just copy that straight over. Nothing's going to change there. What does change is our acceleration. So our dy of 2 is going to be our acceleration here, and that's going to be equal to negative c over m of y of 2, again, because this is our velocity, minus k over m of y of 1. And so if we just plug these two lines into our previous code, then instead of getting a parabola whenever we plot, now we should end up with a nice sine curve. So that's all for this lesson. Uh, good luck uh, solving some ODEs.